EF versus RF lenses. Man, that's a hard one. So if you are a video or photographer content creator, your lens choices are actually, in my opinion, one of the most critical things you can buy. I actually think it's more important than your lenses than your cameras, because I found myself replacing my cameras. They last about two years, maybe three years down the road, and then I end up recycling, getting something new. My lenses last me for decades, and so I had to make a decision. Do I want to take old EF lenses, which have been the history of Canon, or do I need to start investing now in RF lenses on the future? And I was put at this decision, I was put at a crossroads at what to decide. And let me tell you why I made my decision and what I did. First off, you cannot deny Canon has invested wholeheartedly in the Canon RF series. They're fantastic lenses. They are the future. Beautiful Christmas, uh, incredible image quality, a really nice diverse line coming out. And it is the future of Canon, Canon mirrorless cameras coming up. Another good thing about them is they have an extra ring on the lenses themselves, which means now if you have an RF lens, you can control your zoom, your focus, and you can program that third ring to do maybe ISO, aperture, really whatever you want in the camera, it's really flexible. And so it really just adds that much more versatility to your lens. So the RF lenses are incredible. That being said, it wasn't enough to get me to move away from the old trusty EF line lenses of Canon. EF lenses. Okay, so let's get into why I am picking this EF lens right here over the RF. And the first thing comes down to this. At the end of the day, it really comes down first and foremost to quality, right? And the Canon EF, especially the L lenses are amazing quality. I've taken them on literally hundreds of professional commercial shoots for some of the biggest clients, uh, literally multinational clients. This glass holds up. This is a professional top grade glass that hasn't changed. So I know using an EF, especially if I get a good piece of L glass, it's professional, it's going to hold up. Easily up to 60 megapixels, uh, and certainly no problem with the 45 megapixels of the Canon R5. So the quality matches, it's perfect, it's superb, awesome. The next thing is, and this is so big guys, is this, versatility. Okay, while Canon RF lenses are great, they really are a tiny little ecosystem of the whole video and camera world as it exists right now. I know that if I wanted to go shoot on a Canon C500, if I wanted to go shoot on a Canon C300, if I wanted to shoot on a RED, if I even wanted to shoot on an Ari, all of those systems, I can actually get EF mounts for those systems. I can't get RF mounts for them. The Red Komodo is the first Red that's come out that does have an RF mount, but that's just one camera, the Red line. So as it stands today, if you are a videographer that uses multiple systems, which I am, I don't just use my Canon R5, I use lots of different camera systems. It is not, RF mounts are not universal. The other problem with RF lenses is this. Because of the way the RF mounts are designed with the flange, you can take an EF lens like this and get an EF to RF adapter without any problem. You cannot get an RF to EF adapter. RF lenses do not adapt as it stands right now to EF mounts. That means there are literally 99% of the cameras in the world that you cannot use this lens for. If you get an RF lens, you're using it right now for a select group of Canon cameras. So for me, as someone that routinely works lots of different jobs, uh, is kind of camera agnostic, because I use all different types of cameras for different jobs, I need lenses that I could take with me on a job and I know they're reliable and I can just strap them on the camera and go. The Canon RF doesn't do that. This might change in the future, certainly the Red Komodo hints at that, but as it stands right now, it doesn't because even if I need RF things, I can get an adapter, which brings me to my next point, which is the adapters. And Canon, to their credit, has made some incredible and absolutely amazing adapters for your Canon lenses. Remember I said one of the great things about ERF lenses was that it had a third 
third ring on it. Well, check this out. I have an adapter right here with a Canon control ring adapter that check this out. I can still have a RF ring on my EF lens. No problem. And I've got mine set up as an ISO thing. So if I'm out there using ISO, I can throw my camera on, quickly hold that down and adjust my ISO. I love it. It's great. But here's what gets really awesome, right? Let me show you the other adapter that Canon has. Okay, now this is where that gets really amazing is this. This is the Canon drop-in filter adapter for the Canon EF lenses. And this is where it gets awesome. Check this out. Pop off my lens here. What's great about this is if I can take this here and check this out. I have an ND filter built in to my adapter. This is amazing, because check this out. This is a variable ND filter. I literally just slip it right in there, pop it in. I can throw my lens on there, boom. And it's got a little wheel here to dial in your ND setting. And what's amazing about this, guys, is I can take this RF adapter and I can take Canon Cinema Glass, right? With huge things and I can do ND filters on there without having to get map boxes and, and all those huge expensive things on there. Literally, what's amazing about this is this filter system by itself is the closest thing I've ever seen to having built in ND sense filters on a Canon mirrorless. That is worth the price of admission right there. The number one reason why I think this is amazing. Canon has done an incredible job of making EF to RF mount adapters that allow you to get all the versatility of a RF piece of glass while still having the flexibility and versatility of EF glass that you can use in other systems. So certainly something that you should 100% consider. And the last thing that just comes down to, I would think, is the price, okay? Um, EF glass is just a little bit cheaper. I basically took the holy trinity of the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200 and uh, compared them and RF versus EF versions of that you'll spend $1,000 less on EF glass. That's $1,000 you could spend on adapters or anything else and still come out ahead. Anyway, that's where I am. It was a hard decision, I'll be honest, but I think I made the right one. And if you're out there making the decision between to go to RF or EF glasses, these are the things that I think you should consider as you make such a gigantic financial investment and in the future of your photography. But remember guys, the more professional you get, the more cameras you're gonna be using. And while I think RFs may eventually take over EF mounts in the future, I still think that that widespread adoption is probably at least another eight to 10 years out. And while you're doing that, I think it'd be good to get a system of lenses that you can go that will last you that long with no problem, that'll give you the creative, the most flexibility as you go out there and create content. Anyway. Hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think about down there in the links down below. And uh, yeah, get out there, keep on shooting. I'll talk to you soon.